Well, how is all my friends out there? We got a lot of ground to cover. I've been looking at a lot of stuff, doing a lot of thinking. You've had time since this past September 11th to be doing that yourself. So let's uh, have a little chat, shall we? I stated before, there was no way that that video caused those people to torch that embassy and kill those people, nor to rip our flag down and replace it with another one, and to be raising hell all over in different countries. This woman, in case you never thought about it, it's, it's now being plastered everywhere. She is where the buck stops. She is the captain of the ship. She is the Secretary of State. It was her charge to be in charge of all things to do with the security over there at that embassy. From everything that's coming out now, we should know by now this is a cover-up, definitely. This is irresponsibility at the highest level other than the president. I've stated before, this woman is nothing but a bald-faced liar, just like her husband, a smooth-talking, bald-faced liar. For those Democrats and left-wing liberals, uh, whoever you are, wherever you are, open your eyes and see the light. They are liars. They posed a lie in front of all of us after Sept this past September 11th ordeal and told us lies willingly. Now you're left with some options. Who gave the order to tell the lies? Was it King Obama? Was it Prince Biden? Well, I believe the captain of this ship, Miss Secretary of State here, the Queen of Lies, I believe she gave the order to deny the extra security. They're saying basically nothing about her giving any orders. Somebody had to. Oh, what have they done with the Eric Holder fast and furious ordeal? What has our illustrious King Obama done? They pumped out lies, didn't they? They had their little investigation. They swept it under the rug. They said that Mr. Holder had done nothing wrong. They pawned it off on somebody down the line. A fall person. Someone who had to take the buck, huh? Well, you can plainly see now this was planned and allowed to happen. The murder of these people was planned and allowed to happen because it's an incident, or as they like to call it, an event that has an outcome. What do they say? The means, you know, justify the end. They have an end result that they want in finality and the means to get to that end it doesn't matter to them it doesn't matter how many people die there's a goal there at the end for them what, it, what, what is the fallout from what has happened can you tell me the fallout is an outpouring of hatred hatred against Christians and America and their buddy Israel You round up all the hatred and put it in a, a 
big container of a hate container and then you can use it later on for whenever you have something else planned this woman looked at us years ago into a camera and said my my husband did not have sex with that woman her lying husband looked in the camera said the same thing and it was lies why in on earth does anybody want to listen to anything that they have to say and not understand that they're lying to you her husband is nothing but a smooth talking bald faced liar so what if women like him you know and they think he's okay looking and everything and and you seem to be a, real, a smart guy and everything so what you can't shed the coat which is the color of your lies so please wake up and understand that this one here is going to take no responsibility she's not going to admit to nothing just like her filthy lying husband wouldn't admit to nothing about his wrongdoings which were plentiful his wrongdoings went all the way back to his days as the governor of Arkansas didn't they but yet their power and the people that back them in the this thing we call a media washed them clean didn't it to where they still have power so what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see anything that that links her into this her people I don't believe this one here is ever gonna say anything about I didn't do this I blah 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 I think she's gonna have her spokesman and her people do it for her because she don't want to face the music she don't want to get caught this is kind of sort of like a Watergate except people died and it was much more severe this is uh what would we term this if we've got a catchy name we could put on this it has to be respectful though because it involves death oh we could just call it oh how about Clinton Gate 2 look at the eyes on this woman do they not look cold does she not have lies in those eyes am I the only one that can see this So you now know you've been purposely, willingly, with malice and forethought, with the media involved, which is not asked the tough questions. There were uh, some questions asked, I believe it was a CBS newsman that tried to pin Mr. Carney down and Mr. Carney uh, denied 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 you know that's what they get paid to do deny and lie here here's your money this is what we pay you for deny and lie no truth just deny and lie I for one am sick of their denying and lying and all of us need to stand up we don't have a whole lot of recourse but you can pick up your phone you can call your local congressman and you can let him know you're sick and tired of these people lying to you that you know the truth and the truth is there's another reason why that happened and they're not telling it that you're not buying into a stupid video of a lie and you want answers let's move over here this one if you did watch the televised debate if you did not I will tell you my thoughts this guy here lost 
if there was a fair scorecard that you could have kept score on, he got plowed. It's like playing a game of one-on-one. -on -one. He likes to be a basketball kind of a jock. Remember that stuff they used to show him playing basketball a little bit? Yeah, and then he got busted in the mouth. And what did it do? Split his lip or something like that? Well, Mr. Basketball Jones here, you just got shut out because you didn't have any game. Now, this could all be an act. Played out in front of us just like a, a school a play at the auditorium. And if it were, if you read it right, he got destroyed. Because 99.999, if not 100% of things he said, were twisted and lies. But that's what he's done for four years. Going on four years. Is nothing but systematically attempting to take away our system, our way of life, our freedom, our democracy, our truth, our liberty, and our pursuit of happiness. This one here tries to tell people that things are getting better. Does it look like things are getting better? Hmm? Does it really? Did the unemployment figure actually really fall from 8.1 to 7.8 just like that days after this debate? Isn't that coincidentally coincidental? Hmm. I don't think so. You can twist numbers any way you want to and make a percentage come out to your favor if it gains you something. So if they're both controlled by the corporations or some other forces high up or maybe the devil himself, eh? If that is true, then what we're watching is nothing but a mock debate. But if there's any shred at all of any truth in what we're looking at, this guy here did it again. He's trying to smooth talk, make jokes about things, and he's lying. Remember, he's the one that appointed that one. So we know she's a liar. And we've seen countless, countless, countless broken promises and when you promise something and you do the opposite of it you're a liar this guy here well can you really trust him hmm? we don't have much time before the election so we have to look at this stuff and you really gotta think because we truly are at a crossroads and it may be Possibly as we know what we know now in our country, the final crossroads. And if not the final, close to the final. I don't see how you can trust this one. Because if you've heard him speak before, and I believe maybe even in that debate he could have mentioned that, did he not say that he would repeal Obamacare, but there was parts of it that he liked, that he might like to keep, right? Am I the only one that's heard that? So this one here tells us all about how Obamacare is so bad, you want to repeal it and get rid of it, but yet then all of a sudden, poof! Uh, there's a few parts of it that I do like that I would keep and what do you say admit that you're gonna take out parts of it and uh, call those little parts mixed in with yours and then call it Romney care come on now I will say he does say some good things that make some sense right but what happened to us four years ago we had a guy stand up there and just wowed a whole lot of people. 
and they got real impressed because he used big words and he flashed a bright smile, didn't he? And everybody got teary-eyed and was just oh so wowed by him that we ended up electing that. Now, this guy's not lying. Those numbers are true on that one thing for sure that he did blurt out. There are 47 million people on food stamps right now. And there were 32 million before. So the last time I checked, 15 is only 1 million short of 16. So, wow. We didn't double the amount, but we, we're now, uh, wow. Half of 32 million is almost 16, and we went up 15 million, right, didn't we? So we can't be doing too good on the road to recovery, can we? Because if more people need to be on food stamps now than before, then that means more people are worse off than before, which shoots the crap out of this guy standing there saying, oh yeah, things are things are much better. Isn't anybody sick and tired of hearing this guy and their cronies talking about uh oh we inherited all this stuff from the guy in front of us. It's not our fault. You know things were just so messed up that gee it's just gonna take a little bit longer so please give me four more years I can get the job done. Yes you can. You can continue what you started and complete it to the end, which is the plan of your masters that give you the orders. You can continue to bankrupt the United States of America. You can continue to break the Constitution and tear it up and throw it in the wastebasket. You can continue your radical communistic ideologue and push it upon all of us and then look us all in the camera and say, things are getting better. See? And it'll all be a lie. So come in November, if voting really counts, and it is not totally rigged, and I don't see how it can't be, because you could rig voting before it ever went to be electronic, right? <clears throat> there was all different kinds of ways that you could buy votes, uh, you, you could have people double vote. They did all kinds of things. Computers can be hacked, can't they? Why are we to trust them? That all the electronic voting throughout the United States of America is not manipulated and controlled. Why? What is it that they can prove to us that it is not? If the Chinese can hack into the Defense Department on a daily basis. If banks and websites and this, that, and the other can be hacked into, why can't the electronic voting be controlled? And that is a scary thought. Because it means if it's if it can be, we're just being pacified thinking that we count. Thinking that going into to the voting facility and casting our vote made a difference. Pray God that it still does and that what I just said is not true. But there's a highly likely chance that there will be votes manipulated. We have to think back to Bush Gore, don't we? Wow, it was such a close race. We had to go all the way to the Supreme Court, didn't we? And then the Supreme Court anointed, selected Bush to be the president, right? He was never elected because they could never agree on who had more votes, right? And then you had uh, Harris down there, we're in Florida certify the voting 
and the Supreme Court went over all the stuff and then they said yeah George is the man he's the winner right now think about that let's pretend for a minute that it swung the gate the other way and Al Gore had won what what would we have had if Al Gore had won hmm wouldn't we have the guy that made the movie The Inconvenient Truth and gave us a, a bunch of lies about global warming? How about the uh, scientist who manipulated the data that backed it up and found that out to be fraudulent? This is the same Al Gore that could have been president, thank God he wasn't, that just now said that Obama didn't debate too well because he flew in and it was 5,000 feet above sea level and he was like scatterbrained, he didn't have enough time to, for his brain to uh, acclimate itself to the higher altitude. And this guy's supposed to be smart, Al Gore, and he's pumping out a stupid bunch of words like that and expecting us to eat it and believe it. So you see what I'm talking about. We didn't have a chance to win in 2000 because if Bush hadn't got in, we would have got Al Gore. And look at what Al Gore is. He is the same thing he was back then. He, too, is another liar. And then look what we got with Bush, right? Uh, either, he's, either, either Bush was truly a bumbling buffoon who couldn't discern information from false information and maybe the buffoon really did believe that the stuff that uh, pushed the soldiers over into the Iraq war that's, that's, a, that's a possibility but a slim one so this to me is the same thing this one or this one. We're screwed either way. We're 16 trillion in debt. That's not never going to get paid off by the time I'm dead. Or a lot of us. It is impossible that that is going to be paid off and that's the reality of it. So if that debt is never paid off, it is continuing to draw interest, right? And if you're only paying interest payments, you're never paying the principal down. Harry Reid and the Democrats control the Senate and they are not putting a budget together. They're still spending money like it grows on a tree. So they're gonna go borrow on more money and junk. So the principal is gonna get bigger and as the principal gets bigger the interest payment gets bigger. You see where I'm going? Sooner or later, you can't pay for something. You can't pay for something, you default. You see what's going on with default over, well, they haven't actually defaulted, but they're on the verge of default uh, in several countries over in Europe, and they keep having to be bailed out, right? And with each bailout for each country, well, there's strings attached, aren't there, to whoever the creditor is that's giving them the money. And the people don't like it, do they? Uh-uh. You don't like getting your pensions cut. You don't like getting your wages cut. You don't like getting anything cut. Because you worked hard to get to where you was and then taking it all down. Coming soon to us. Sooner than we would like to think. Which leads me to this one. Bernarke. Bernanke, excuse me. Now, You need to watch today's episode of Alex Jones. He has special guest Lindsay, Pastor Lindsey Williams on there. Now, I know one of you out there is on the anti-Alex Jones bandwagon at the moment. But, uh, well, 
the guy does bring some good information out so you know you gotta put that in your pipe and smoke that one too uh, and then you did point at your head before and say look at this mark here uh, I've got the mark of the beast and we all knew that was fake that was no mark of the beast on the side of your head and you did say that you were Christ before and we knew that was all a crock and we let that slide so yes I do watch some of your videos no uh, I don't agree with some of the stuff but I treat you with dignity and politeness I like you you're my friend you do have a good heart and you want to help people and you're trying to warn people of certain things but you have to take information where you can get it and it's not always bad information so watch today's show on his channel Alex Jones's channel and watch the interview with Lindsey Williams and pay attention to what he's telling you about the derivatives market and about Bernanke and the forty billion dollars a month think about it you didn't really need Lindsey Williams to tell you everything I mean he's he's telling you what he knows that is supposed to be coming from an elite but anybody with a brain can understand forty billion dollars per month times 12 months is 480 billion dollars which is almost a half a trillion dollars per year and this guy said they was going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it as long as they needed to do it, to do it. But what do you think would happen to the value of the dollar where do you think they're getting the money if they're not borrowing it they'll be printing it and everybody in their dog knows the more money you print and get into circulation the less value the money you'll have and when money has less value you have less purchasing power which means you're gonna pay more for your stuff so when you listen to the show you're gonna hear Lindsay lay out what has happened and why this guy is doing what he's doing and you're gonna understand why your gas is going to go up, your food's going to go up, your clothes is going to go up, your everything's going to go up. And as it goes up, your wage won't. And it's going to pinch us, and it's going to pinch us all hard. And you need to get a heads up, and you need to get a grip on things, because it is going to be a rough time. It may not break us right off the bat, but it could be a nice little medium sized grind that takes us down so I don't agree with everything Alex Jones says and Alex Jones is not right about everything nor are all of us but we try to be as accurate as we can with what we have to work with with our sources of information which are not infinite we have to discern truth from a non-truth. What have I said before? Throw the lie away and wherever you're getting your source take the truth out of it and keep it and disregard the lies. You understand my meaning? Even I make mistakes. I try not to and that's why I try to choose my words accordingly in the things that I say but you gotta listen to that because it is going to happen you can't keep doing like this guy here is doing you can't print that much money without without something really catastrophic coming economically later on down the line for doing what you're doing because how that's uh, something he's never explained how are you going to pull if this thing was on the level up and up and it began to do some good which it won't it's not intended to do good but let's say that it, it did for the pretend sake of where we're going here how would you take out all of that money out of circulation 
that you would put into it. How are you going to take it back out and get it out of circulation, huh? That's a lot. But what do we got going on now with Basher? Basher Assad. Syria. Rebels. Fighting. Damascus. The Bible has told us Damascus will be leveled, and we know that. It'll be a heap. It's not looking too good right now. See? It doesn't take a giant bomb to level something, so when you try to picture what God meant, it didn't have to be a big thing dropping over there and going kabooey, and then everything's leveled continued fighting like they've got is tearing up the buildings, it's killing people. You know it's been going on so long you'd have to be living under a rock to not to not know what's going on over there. And now you've got Turkey in on the act. So what it's it's a proxy war. Okay? I said it a thousand times it, it seems like Tunisia Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Yemen. You getting my drift again? Now these guys are on the, on the map. Syria is, they want to turn over there too. Now, I'll say it again. None of this is being done for any good not the way we think good and these maniacal people Satanist it is good to them because they want scumbags in there that are worse than the scumbags that were there before because guys like him and the ones they took out before aren't playing their style of ball they want to do a different kind of a thing and they won't do it so they're getting rid of them and they're going to use these these new ones coming in that's going to either agree or be manipulated into doing exactly what they want for later down the line. And all the hate that they're pouring into the hate bucket for America, Israel, and Christians is going to be used later on. Who, who do you think is going to control the army of Satan. I mean, you know what I'm saying, not control it, but they're gathering it up now and getting it ready for the guy that's going to control it. I mean, he's, he's got to have his system laid down. He's got to have his, his uh, power, his military laid down. So, you're looking at a combination of, uh, say, NATO and all these Middle East countries. Oh, you're looking at, you're seeing right now the, the continued formulation of New World Order. You're seeing it in front of you. It's in, it's in the paper every day. Now remember, discern the information. Throw away the lie and keep the truth. You can find it. You just gotta think. When you're, when you're reading and you're thinking about what you're reading and what are they saying, you know, think about what they're not saying. And then you get this one over in Iran. We all saw, well, we didn't see, but we heard, you know, the continued statements this one's made on behalf of his country and he's not going over to the UN and saying things without their approval before he gets here. They know what he's going to say and do when he gets up to that podium. So, you're still hearing them say, we want the nuclear power for peace. This guy on the other side of the world is a liar too. They could care less about having that power for peaceful purposes. They want a weapon, because with a weapon, 
they're going to be carrying a big stick then. See, remember the old walk softly and carry a big stick? These guys want a big stick. Russia's got a big stick, China's got a big stick, Israel's got some big sticks, but these guys don't have one. So they can't be a big stick carrier. And if they did, they'd be able to manipulate the world oil market. They'd be able to tell people to screw off, we've got a big stick, and we'll aim it at you, and we'll fire it. So back off. They want it for bad purposes. You know, quit giving these people the benefit of the doubt. Haven't we done that long enough? Isn't that what this one has been doing for four years? Giving him more time? Can I have some more time? Let's just give him some more time. Let's let diplomacy and some sanctions. Let's give it time. Well, when you give it time, it gives them time to complete the next advancement towards their goal of the enrichment and then the placement on a weapon to where it can be delivered to the target and we know where the target would be it would be Israel and second on the list if they could ever make something that would reach that long you got it it would be us A lot of people don't like this one, or his country and people, but I can assure you, if you're on the wrong side of the fence, it's not going to be a good thing in the finality when God judges. I want you to think of you, you yourself, all the people you love. Let's say they're all at your house, right? Everybody's inside, but outside your house, you've got the whole block. Everybody that lives in the whole block around you, and they've all got guns, and they're all circled around your house. You look out the window, and that's all you see is all the people in the whole neighborhood in a circle around your home, and they've all got guns pointed at you. And every so often, somebody pops a shot. And that shot hits the wall in your living room. Well, that doesn't sound realistic to you, but it's just an example that you can get into your mind. Think of the little tiny country of Israel. They're the closest thing to Western democracy, similar to ours, in the Middle East. Nobody else has a system of government like that. And they are believers in, in God and Jesus. Close to, to uh, you know, our belief in Christianity over here. You know, we're pretty much on the same page uh, in our belief. Theirs are in some ways, you know, different, but not as different as Islam. So their tiny little country is encircled by a whole bunch of people that would like to kill them. They don't like them. They hate them. You see the hate that came out when our embassy was attacked. So in the same way that you see in the mind you and your loved ones in your home encircled by your neighbors who all have guns and they all hate you and they want to kill you that's the situation these guys are in that is why they don't want them to get the nuclear weapon the holocaust was not a fake it would be ludicrous and out of your mind to believe that never occurred. So they already know what it's like. They know what it's like to be slaughtered. And they said never again. And God himself 
his hand protects him after that. You know? A lot of people want to say Zionists, you know, Rothschild set up the, the country of Israel, blah, blah, blah. Did God ever say in any line in the Bible that he wouldn't use everything that he made for a purpose? You know, when he said Israel, you know, I'll lead you back and everybody's going to come back to this land and it's going to reform. Did he ever say he would not use scumbags to get to get it done? The scumbags may have financed it and they had an idea why they were doing it. But they didn't even know that God was using them to get the job done that he wanted done anyway. So the scumbags, if you want to believe that, thought they were doing it for their dirty little filthy reason. But in the finality, <laughs> God was letting them do it because he wanted it done anyway. You see how this stuff works? The devil makes a move. God makes a counter move. God makes a move. The devil makes a counter move. See? It, it, it's, it's not a game. But it's just the way things work. That's to keep... To try to keep a balance of evil and goodness. Evil and goodness. You know? You're going to do these bad things. Well, I'm not going to let you do a whole bunch of them. I'm going to do some good things over here to counter what you did that was bad. So, some have said they think that Israel may be waiting until after the election so that they can see who wins it before they make uh, a strike against Iran. Some have said it is possible that uh, Netanyahu and the Israelis don't believe that Obama will win therefore they're waiting for Romney to win before they make their move and on the other side of the coin some have said that if they thought that Obama was going to win again that they would already go ahead and make a move I think they're going to wait <clears throat> like I said before I think they're going to wait 2012 and the Mayans um, I never said it was the end of the world in fact uh, many times I've said it's not the end of the world because there has to be a world to live in for everything to fulfill you know it can't just be over because we're, we're not done the prophecies in Revelation have still yet to come some of them so no it's not going to end but what we see is we're going we're gonna to leave this age, we're going to enter into a different age. The Mayan calendar is going to reset once tw December 21, 2012 passes on. It will reset and begin to count again in a new counter. And this year of December 21, 2012 is a year of great change and if you think we ain't seeing great change right now uh, slap yourself in the face and wake up because there's change every day there's more death every day more famine every day more plague every day more economic collapsing every day uh, more lies told to us every day uh, it's all over the place it's 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 happening so fast you can't even really go through it all and talk about every single thing uh, you know we could keep going and going and going and going I mean I could go for three hours and go through all the changes that, that, that were are happening all over the place not only just what I've mentioned but the, the changes in people for the worse uh, the way they, the way they're becoming, uh, the way they're thinking, uh, the, the the 
just all kinds of things. So, we're going to go to here now. Now, a while back, I was asked a question. Uh, I can't remember who exactly wrote a comment, but they asked me, and this had to do with uh, fallen angels, Nephilim, and heaven, creation, etc. The question, I believe, was, um, and I apologize for taking so long to get back to you, what do I think happened? Well, it's it's not real. It's not what I think happened. It's what God said has happened, and of course, He doesn't actually go into total descriptive uh, in the Holy Bible. You know, Enoch is more descriptive. Uh, so, in my own words, to you to answer your question. In the beginning, he created things before us. He made angels. And the angels were to serve him and love him and to do tasks that he, he asked to have done. When planets and solar systems and whatnot were created, he could speak things into existence and even afterwards there were still tasks to do throughout all space and universe and everything and, the, and these angels were helping to do these things also at his command so everybody was on the same page and everything was great except that All angel, all the angels are different. They're not clones and they're not robots or anything. Just like you and me are not the same. We don't look the same. We don't talk the same. We're not the same height. We don't like the same food. We have our own individuality. We have our own specialties. You know, our own deficiencies. We have our own individuality. Angels are the same way. They're all different. You know, they've got the different powers, different knowledge, you know, specific charge of knowledges and their specialties, I guess is what I would say. And with each one, there is a task they were assigned to perform. So everything was going lovely. And God decided to create something else, which turned out to be us. So... The angels knew the plan all along. They were helping to build the plan that God had. When God wanted to make man, some of them didn't like it. Man has something that angels don't. Angels have powers to do things that we don't. Either we don't have those powers or we have forgotten how to use them but we're not the same as them in my opinion they've got powers that we don't but like I said we've got something they don't they were made immortal never to die we were made to live a long time you know that's what he said uh, to Adam you know because you sinned uh, you're not gonna make it to the next day you know, so a day to him is a thousand years. So obviously, you were intended to live at least a thousand years back then, before we sinned. But we had been created with a soul, and that's something that angels don't have. They don't have a soul. So you had a batch of angels in heaven, somehow that uh, they got together. They didn't like it, and uh, they copped an attitude, you know, they, because God wanted them to also sort of serve us too, not that we were gods, but 
you know, they were supposed to, uh, I don't know if serve is the right word, but I'll go ahead and use it. Serve man, too. And really help, you know, help man out a lot. And they didn't want to. There was a certain amount of them that did not want to. You know, so they cooked up a little plan behind his back. And that little plan was, hey, we're not buying into this. And we're not going to do it. And we think that, you know, we think that we got enough of this that we can overthrow him. And the rest of these angels, so, on a certain date, I mean, if they had some type of timing that they could all get together at the same time, you know, there was a, a what? What is going on in Syria? A rebellion, right? You had Arab Spring, everything re re revolted, rebelled. Well, this was the original rebellion, the original revolt. Except the people that rebel, or the angels that rebelled and revolted, were beaten. They did not win. And their punishment for not winning, their punishment for not obeying, their punishment for not showing their love to their Creator resulted in banishment, expelled, kicked out. They went from being in heaven, wherever that's at, to having a special place made for them. Unfortunately, it happened to be down here in the earth. We call it hell. Hell is supposedly inside the earth. At some specific location somewhere deep inside the bowels of the earth. So these guys were banished. Then you had the temptation of Adam and Eve which caused the fall. You had Cain who was fathered by the devil that that is the fall the eating of the eating of the apple the fruit along with the manipulation of the original human DNA as you understand man and woman mate have a child, it is a joining of the male DNA with the female DNA, resulting in a combination DNA of the two of them, which is a piece of you and your husband. Or, if you're a male listening, just the opposite, you and your wife. So that is how our DNA was originally flawed. And to this day, it is still flawed. That is why we have an inclination to sin. We're, of course, we're tempted by evil spirits to do things that we wouldn't normally do. That's why you get the, you know, if you want to think of it that way, the angel on one shoulder telling you not to do bad things, and then the devil, little devil, angel on the other shoulder telling you to do bad things. It's within all of us. And it all starts in your mind, doesn't it? Your mind works so fast, you can sin just like that. Because thought is instantaneous. You can get a bad thought just like that. Boom. And once you've done it, it's happened so fast, you can't take it back. <clears throat> Therefore, if you're going to try to live a good clean life and be a good clean person you have to learn to control your mind even if even if it doesn't come out of your mouth words or uh, whatever you're saying in a bad way whatever you think if you go with it and it's bad it, it, it transforms itself into an action so it all starts in the way you think 
So once man fell, got booted out, and we went through Cain and Abel. Cain, the devil's son, killed his brother, first liar, first murderer, you know. We go farther down the line of history. Well, these other good angels that did not participate in the original revolt and rebellion in heaven, they were still good angels then. But you had, according to Enoch, he gave an actual figure. 200 of these good angels that fought with God against the original ones that got kicked out. You had another little batch of those those people that were called the Watchers and they were charged with tasks. They had assigned places and they were to watch and they were to help. That's why they, they were named the Watchers. And these guys, 200 of them, decided the same thing almost, except in a different way, see? They didn't actually go back to heaven and start a war and try to overthrow God. They had a different plan. Their plan was to leave their assigned duty wherever that was and whatever that would be. And therein you get down into the Bible when it says they came down here, the sons of God, and took, took the daughters of men, you know, took wives, as many as they wanted, and had children. So that is also something that is not meant to be. They were never meant to have children. We were, man was, but not them. So then you get into Nephilim. And you get another, another incident of man's d DNA, again, being polluted and intertwined with angel DNA, a foreign DNA. And it don't mix. I mean, it just don't mix. When it, when it mixes, it doesn't come out like a man. It comes out like a giant, uh, mu something mutated. It's not man. So then, then you get you get your mythology from a lot of that stuff. Uh, you know, people think it's just a made up lore and, and whatnot, but it is not. Our ancestors wrote it down for us, and they weren't just bedtime stories or fables and fairy tales and whatnot. That's how they pass it off to all the generations because that's the way they want you to not believe that anything like that could actually happen. If you think it's just a fake story, hey, you're not going to believe it, right? It's just a, you know, fable. No big deal. That's the way they've got by with it all these years. Only a fraction of people understand and believe and therefore you get your big-time heroes men of old you get your Olympians you get your systems of rule born and these systems change from epoch to epoch but they all originate from the same beginning you know you can go into Sumerian tablets and all that stuff, but it all comes from the beginning source, which was that. So what caused what caused the angels to do this? Well, they're not robots; they have free will, free will to choose. That's God doesn't want to force anyone to love Him, not even an angel. It's totally voluntary, and these for whatever the reason, chose not to follow anymore. They wanted to be the second batch called the Watchers obviously wanted to be the leaders, not the actual creators of things. They wanted to obviously have lineage of their own. They wanted to have 
fruits, you know, kids and stuff. And at the same time, they wanted to set up a system, a system of rule over man and rule man. And this has led us all through history in different ages, in different ways, all the way up to now. So uh, hopefully I've answered your question. I've tried to condense it down into uh, short an answer as I can, which I could go deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, there's a friend of mine, Zen Garcia. I haven't talked to you in a long time in, in mail or anything, Zen, but I'm still uh, keeping up with everything that you put out, which is excellent, I might add. The Lord has touched you in a deep way and given you the ability to uh, search out and find knowledge and bring it to all the rest of us and enlighten us and I would urge uh, people to search the channel Endeavor Freedom you can really be enlightened and that is my answer that is what God has said happened that is what Enoch has said it happened um, they're still here I mean you can definitely bet They don't look like giants, though. You know, there are there's people that carry that DNA here to this day, and those people, obviously, many of them, are leaders in the world in one way, shape, or form. Wherever, obviously, they are. That is why they rule. You know, you sitting there with the divine right to rule the rule of, of divinity I have the divine right to rule I am closest to what you know what are they saying I am closest in my lineage my genetics what I carry in my DNA to uh, King David or to Jesus you know you get the Merovingian theory uh, that he had a wife and they had offspring and I'm related to him because of all this that and the other that's hogwash Jesus never had a wife he never had children he was pure as all can be he never indulged in sex like 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 man is intended to because he was not a man he was different. He was he was God in human form. He come down here to teach us how to live, to give to give to to give us a way out of our sin through his shed blood and his crucifixion, so that our sin could be forgiven and we could go to heaven. Nobody would have ever made it into heaven if that didn't happen. I mean, that's all you had to do was think one bad thing and you committed a sin. Now, I know there's a gazillion people out there that's, that's you know, you're atheists or agnostics or whatever other religion you are that are saying hogwash and laughing. But I'm praying for you people because if you don't believe nothing and you close your eyes and you take that last breath for the last time, it ain't going to end and you ain't getting 72 virgins or whatever your choice of religion would say that you would receive you're going to get reality of the truth and I want you to be on the right side I don't want you to be lost so think about everything I've said do the work let the words flow through you let the understanding come to you and get close to him and ask him to come into your heart but be wary because all the world's a stage 
and sometimes things are just played out for the purpose of manipulation but not everything is manipulation because we do live in a world of reality and reality is becoming harsher and closer to home and I'm sorry to say it but we are fixing to have some hard times and I do see it coming I can't tell you exactly when but I am going to say it's probably going to be starting about the end of the year and rolling over into the next one I don't think we're going to have to worry <clears throat> I've already said that before in prior videos I don't think we're going to have to worry about uh, 2012 DA14 I've been keeping an eye on it it's not going to it's not going to hit the earth you know some people saying it's going to hit the earth and plow it to have earth change you don't have to get smashed okay you can simply uh, have something interfere with you with your mag your magnetic system your gravity which and that'll cause things to happen you don't have to get smashed but we probably are going to get some uh, rocks at some point because we know that we got wormwood and I don't believe 2012 DA 14 is wormwood Planet X same deal why can't we see it well we're it's not that we're not looking for it maybe we're not intended to see it until the right time you see some interesting photos that have an anomaly in it that can't be explained you know they've already talked about tight so we know that we have something on the outer border that is incoming but yet it's pretty far away but we know it's there and we know it's coming take a while so objects like that you know they're letting us know about it. like I said before we don't have the telescopes if all of us had NASA style telescopes or observatory telescopes you know 400 million dollar telescope or something we'd be able to see too eh so I'll pose it to you like this if there's nothing coming why does the Vatican need a big expensive telescope to peer out into space? They're a religious institution, right? They have astronomers, don't they? So what are they watching for, huh? They know. They know exactly where to look. They know exactly what they're watching for know exactly how far away it is need I not remind anybody you can search uh, if you can't find them where I put them on my page in my favorites if YouTube hadn't took it off where I have to put it back in you can find the Mount Father Malachi Martin videos he was bound by papal secrecy but he could not disclose exactly in words about the prophecy of Fatima but he did say what the Pope had said why should the public you know pretty well the public be informed about what is going to come there's, when there's going to be millions of people dying per the hour so all you have to do is use your mind there if there's truth to that prophecy of Fatima and what Malachi Martin repeated that the Pope supposedly said I would be 
talking about John Paul, who is dead. What possibly could it be that would kill millions of people per the hour? All you have to do is think a little bit. And it has to be something very serious. So you put that together with what the Vatican is watching through their fancy telescope. And it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out. Let's take a look at what we're doing on the earthquakes real fast before I close. I've made this long because I've been gone for a while and I had a lot to say and you need to know. And you need to think. This would be from today as we can see today has been relatively calm. You don't even have any five pointers on the 11th. So we will go down to the 10th. <clears throat> and we did have five pointer in Iran, five two. South Sandwich Islands region. You almost had two fives. You had a four nine and a five four. Indonesia also had a four nine and Papua. Maluka C four nine. California has been getting some little ones. You had a hey Canada, St. Lawrence, Quebec, Canada, Spaceman. You had a three point nine up there. There's California again with a small 2.6 and Costa Rica with a 5.3. And we have, we're making it right here, 86 miles away from me, to my south, Oklahoma City, a small 2.7. Don't like to see that anywhere in the world, much less in my neighborhood. This would be from the ninth, and we had the we had some red. In case you didn't know, 6.4 in the Bellini Islands region. You see, we're relatively small. Although I don't consider earthquakes small, I don't consider churning and breaking under my feet to be anything normal. You've got Indonesia here, five and a half, five two, and four eight. Tonga was a four eight. Here we go again. We got a 3.3 .3 here yesterday. We're going to fall back to the 8th even. You're going to see, if you didn't know, you had a 6.0 in the Gulf of California. You had a 6.3 in the Band of Sea. You see the magnitudes are relatively low. Elsewhere, other than where I've just shown you. Chile struck a 5.8. We can even go one day farther back if we wish to. You can see that these magnitudes here are also relatively low. 5.3, Azerbaijan. Hope I pronounced that right. I think I missed it. 5.3 in the New Britain region of Papua New Guinea. So for right now, other than the reds that I've shown you, there's the Philippines with a 5.6. We're not popping, thank goodness. We're not hitting any seven points or any, seven pointers or anything. And from what I understand, um, the pressure over in the volcano in Japan is not increased to a level of exploding that volcano, at least not yet. And they've not had a big enough earthquake that would cause that thing to blow. I'm checking on uh, some of those reactors over there to try and see what is the condition of them. And by checking on them, what I mean is I've mentioned it before, i got a friend that lives over there, unfortunately. He did not leave. He did not move. 
and I'll go ahead and tell you uh, right now he has children and I don't think his children are well. He's not talking to me very much now, and he doesn't appear online that much. And it takes me a while to get a takes me a while to get an answer. <clears throat> so I'm going to be asking him for all the information on three and four that he can get his hands on to pass over to me, so we can bypass this lame media that does nothing but perpetually twist or lie to us and I'm going to say some prayers for all those children over there that are turning up with the cancer and I'm going to talk to him about his child because when he doesn't say anything something is usually wrong and I have this distinct feeling that something is wrong with this child if I should turn out to be wrong about that I will let all of you listeners know but I believe his child is, is uh, affected so please think about what you what you believe about these people because they're lying to you and people have died because of their lies it is it is sickening to my stomach to see what is happening to our country and to see the leadership that we have right now which is leading us down a path of destruction a path of bankruptcy pushing us into the new world order and I'm not even getting into the chipping of the school children there's so much more to talk about I'll just have to put that in a, in more videos so I'm gonna let everybody go and I hope I've caused you to think. I hope I've caused you to search for information. And I hope in some way, the biggest thing I hope is that I hope that I brought you a little closer to this one, your maker, God Almighty. Because he'll be there for you and nobody else will be. If you're alone, you don't have anybody, or anything you're not alone because he's there if you get tired and you fall down and you can't walk anymore he will pick you up and he will carry you that's all you gotta do is ask him for the help he's not gonna let you suffer with any more than what you can take think of how he suffered and what we suffer with pales in comparison is nothing compared to how he suffered so I love all of you I wish there was something other than praying that I could do to help every person in the world that needed it so if you all band with me and pray with me before you lay your head down at night we can make a difference because it goes straight to heaven and he'll hear us and he'll help us put that armor on and shield yourself from the evil as much as you can try to walk in the light and he'll always be there for you I'll talk to you all pretty soon I got a lot more stuff to go over like I said there's tons of changes going on.